When I was young, there was a great movie called Outbreak. In the opening credits, you see the various levels of biologic safety within the USAMARID facility. In BO4, we see encapsulated hazmat suits. Here, Kevin Spacey is checking his suit for any tears or gaps. This is an example of a supplied air respirator. Filtered air is fed into the suit and exits the suit through those round exhaust ports. Here they take their supply lines and plug them into their suits. I'm going to show you how to do something similar to this except with an encapsulated suit. The benefit these suits have is that they have a large amount of air volume within them which allows them to transfer from line to line and still have filtered air breathed in between. So by now most of us in the medical community have heard of a PAPR. That's a powered air purifying respirator. Uh, and what it does is essentially it blows filtered air um, into the hood or mask um, or helmet of someone to, to provide them with purified air uh, so they can breathe. Um, so we're going to utilize that concept um, to, make what's, to make a supplied air respirator out of the medical air in your facility. What's, what's good about, those, about the pressurized air is you don't really have to worry about a seal. Uh, you don't have a mask over your face so you can talk and breathe much more easily. So it's not about safety so much as it is just comfort. Um, so typically those things look like this. This is, a, this is the VersaFlow uh, M200. This is a, um, pa like a PAPR helmet. Um, this is the VersaFlow BT30 hose that would normally hook up into your PAPR. Um, this is one similar to like a, a, similar to like a welding helmet. Um, so you put this on, it has an adjustable ring in the back to tighten or loosen it. Um, this is pulled over the, the face and then you pull this over to provide a seal around the, the face and helmet. So basically I'm going to show you how to run this continuously without batteries, without filters um, off of your medical air supply. Um, so just like I have a air compressor in my workshop, you have a giant air compressor in your facility most likely. Um, and that is utilized and, and plumbed all throughout the hospital through the medical air line. Um, what's great about that is, is one, that compressor and likely multiple compressors uh, has a huge capacity and it's already filtered breathable air. So air compressors are basically lines that run air that have little connectors on them. Most of them are the same connectors that are on a normal air compressor. They're simple kind of male and female plugs uh, that just kind of snap in place. Um, these can be screwed on and screwed off. So you can buy these air fitting kits that have multiple types of male and female um, on each end and these just kind of snap in together. Uh, so this used to be what all the air supplies were in the, um, in the hospitals. They, they've gone to a newer type called a DISS. Um, so you may need an adapter from, a, from this quarter inch air supply hose uh, to a DISS. Um, otherwise, um, if you have the older type system like this, um, you can just plug right into this. So you may notice like in your operating room or in your um, ICU, you have a little plug that looks like this. If, if so, you can plug a hose like this straight in. Um, these hoses usually come in coiled um, or straight line hoses. Uh, probably you're gonna want a straight line hose as it's gonna be easier to clean. Uh, th this kind of hose is great if you're, just, if you're plugging in above the operating room, uh, just cause it can kind of hang down. Um, and not get not really get in the way of people's feet as much. Um, so you're just going to plug that hose right into there. So what this is going to allow us to do is we're going to run our PAPR helmet off of an air hose like this that's hooked up into the medical uh, medical airline. Um, how we're going to do that? There's a couple devices. Um, I'm going to show you the fancy 3M way, and then I'm going to show you the DIY way. Um, so this is a V300, I believe the V is for Vortex. And this is basically just, there's nothing fancy, this is just an air regulator. Um, so this is the V300. Um, it has a tube adapter um, that accepts different kinds of tubes. So it can accept the VersaFlow tube. It can also accept the, the screw type um, hose fitting. Um, and what that, all this is, is an air fitting that's gonna snap into our air line and then has a regulating valve so we can control how much air is going to our suit. Um, it also has a belt. Um, this isn't the best belt to sterilize, but this belt snaps in here. You wear, wear, hook this on your belt or waist. And this is a VersaFlow tube. This VersaFlow tube is just gonna pop in and turn. You can move this to the back. 
and then put on your helmet. So now we have a powered positive pressure air supply from our medical airline. This just plugs into the medical airline. Again, you may need a DISS adapter in order to do this. So that's a 3M version. Um, these things are all pretty, pretty pricey. Uh, there's also an even pricier version called the V100 and it actually cools the air. Um, so, so it takes in normal room temperature or hot air and cools it down to a lower temperature. Um, that, that's probably gonna be great for Texas and keeping you cool in that hood. Um, the problem is, is, is the way it does that is it leaks out hot air. So it's gonna leak out hot air and blow out cold air. Um, so this is gonna be more efficient and you're gonna be able to run more of these off of your uh, air compressor. Um, the 3 m manual says that you need about 20 cubic feet per minute to run one each of these. So our hospital compressor can run 350 cubic feet per minute at 52 PSI. Um, so maintaining that regulation of 20 cubic feet per minute, um, you can potentially run about 15 to 17 of, of these off that line, um, excluding any other device that might be pulling uh, air through there as well. Uh, in reality, you could probably run those even more uh, if you were to ju judicious about how much air you were doing uh, and if you were willing to sacrifice a little bit of that pressure and, and go below 52 PSI. Um, so this is a, the kind of expensive 3M version. So this whole setup is cheaper than a Papper, um, but I'm, it's still fairly expensive. So I'm gonna show you a, more of a DIY way to do this. Uh, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna basically turn a striker helmet uh, into this same thing, into a positive um, air pressurized respirator. So any hardware store should have some air compressor fittings. Um, if you want, you can start with one of these splitters. Um, that way you can run two or three of these off the same line. Um, and then you're gonna wanna get some sort of regulating valve. Okay, so there's several different ways, several different valves that will do that. Um, so there's several different valves that'll do that. Um, this one is just a simple uh, kind of inline valve um, with a ball valve that you can turn. Um, if you want to monitor your pressure, you can also get a valve that has a PSI monitor on it as well. Uh, basically, you're just going to buy a nylon belt um, and then you can attach this uh, to the belt using uh, any various methods. Uh, a couple of zip ties uh, through there would work best. Um, and then you're going to hook your line up into that. Um, and then this, this line from here is going to go into a striker helmet. So this is a striker helmet com commonly used by orthopedic surgery in the operating room. Um, and basically it's just a head gear that's already laying around the hospital. Um, so we're not going to use the fan. And that's not going to help you. We're not going to use the fan or the battery. Um, so if you want, you can just go ahead and disconnect this. Um, and basically you can see that it already has a fan built in and already has an air supply that's blown in front of the face, uh, which is perfect for what we want to use it for. Um, so basically we're going to tie that air line into the back of this here. Um, so first thing you want to do is remove this little blue cap here. Um, so what you're going to do is turn this 90 degrees and then just carefully slide a little screwdriver in underneath there on each side. Um, that's going to pop that, those release pins and pull this out. Now, if you measure this, this opening um, is about five eighths inches. Um, most air supply lines are about a quarter inch um, to five eighths inch. Um, so there's five eighths inches there. Um, this air line, these thin ones are about a quarter inch. Some of the thicker ones are about five eighths inches. Uh, so the perfect line is one of those, is a long straight inline line and you're gonna cut that um, and basically feed that line through here. So this is an old inline hose I have um, from home and we're gonna take this and make, uh, make the same thing out of, out of this. Um, so any of your connections need to have Teflon tape. So this is typically what it looks like. Um, you're just gonna wrap that around your fitting um, so that's more efficient and you don't lose as much air. All right, so we're gonna take this, this ball valve. You can use pretty much any valve This is what the ball valve looks like. It's in line, has a little, has a little handle to control the amount of flow. Cause that's the main thing we want to do with this is we want to control how much air is going through there. Um, so we wrap this with Tef, we wrap this with Teflon tape. And then we're just going to put this on our hose.
and then tighten that with the crescent wrench. All right. On the other end, you can put whatever hose uh, fitting you want. This one already has a seal on it, so you don't have to put any Teflon tape on it. And that's gonna go into our airline. And then this is gonna be the parts on the, on the belt. So you can get any belt at, nylon belt at REI and secure this to your hip or waist in some sort, sort of fashion. Uh, we're then gonna give us a little bit of slack and we're gonna cut this line here. So we're gonna cut this. All right, so here's what we have so far. We have our inline, our intake of air. We have our valve that's gonna be secured to our waist. And then we have our hose that's gonna go into our striker helmet. Um, so luckily this hose is about the same size as that opening. So this is 5 8 inch. And this is 5 8 inch as well. So we're gonna feed this hose through that opening very carefully. Ideally, the, the smaller hose, smaller size hose you have will be better. I don't want to break this one, but basically you're going to, you're going to feed that hose up through this opening to this soft channel port here, and then tighten your zip, zip tie to hold that tube in place. This is going to be secure to your waist. You're going to wear this. Um, you're also going to want to put some tape over the top of this to make it more efficient and to, and to make sure that that air is directed uh, to the front of the mask. Um, afterwards, you can put anything over it, any sort of covering. Um, a, a ortho hood um, uh, is ideal for this. Um, so if you don't have a striker helmet, you can also make this out of a, a welding helmet, a grinding shield, um, or the face shield that most people are wearing. Um, you just secure this hose to the headset um, and then drape and tape uh, the rest of the hood covering. It, it doesn't have to be perfectly airtight as long as there's a positive flow of air um, and it's positive pressure, that's all you need.